This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South today, New Zealand records a record 446 cases of COVID-19 with Dunedin's first community case in 22 months. A clinical psychologist encourages people to keep things in perspective with the return of COVID-19 to southern communities. And resource consent is lodged for a 143-room hotel in Wanaka. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. A record 446 cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in New Zealand today. Two are in Queenstown and the first community case reported in Dunedin in almost 22 months. It's been a long time coming with the first case of COVID-19 since 2020 reported yesterday. And it's still to be confirmed yet whether it's the highly transmissible Omicron variant. Dunedin Mayor Aaron Hawkins says the virus was always bound to get here. It was inevitable given the current uh, Omicron outbreak that our charmed run of luck between May 2020 when we last had positive cases uh, in the city uh, would come to an end uh, and, and that happened today and, and it's uh, put back into sharp relief the, the seriousness of the situation uh, that we're in facing down a, a global pandemic. The Southern District Health Board confirmed the case saying the person travelled between Dunedin, Wanaka and Cromwell during their infectious period. Mayor Hawkins is reminding people to stick to the basics. It's understandable uh, that, that people are anxious, um, it, but it's, a, it's important now uh, that we do what we can to protect people as much as possible. Queenstown seems to be the major scene of the southern outbreak, with two cases of COVID-19 confirmed in the resort town yesterday. That's prompted many in the area to get tested to make sure, as more than a dozen potential exposure events were published in Queenstown, Cromwell and Wanaka. No Dunedin locations of interest have been added following confirmation of a case in the city yesterday. But the dental school has cancelled appointments as a precaution. It's understandable that, that people are anxious. Uh, the virus has evolved over time uh, and we're dealing with at the moment a particularly virulent strain. Ministry of Health guidelines under the red light setting are set to remain unchanged in Dunedin, the South today. A group of protesters came out in Dunedin last night to show their support for the demonstration taking place at Parliament in Wellington. About 60 protesters from Voices for Freedom Together with other supporters lined up along the one way beside Toitui Otago Settlers Museum early last night. They encouraged toots of support from motorists, organisers saying the group was out in support of the anti-vaccine and anti-mandate protests happening in Wellington. Similar rallies and support were happening around the country following the nationwide Convoy 2022 vehicle rally from the south and north of the country. There was a complaint about one protester, but the majority were well behaved, saying they were standing up for what they saw as their rights being taken away. The global COVID-19 pandemic has created an ever-changing situation around the world and increased the uncertainty for, and anxiety for many people. With COVID again circulating in the community in the South, one clinical psychologist is encouraging people to keep things in perspective. COVID-19 has returned to the South with new community cases in both Queenstown and Dunedin. Almost two years since the COVID-19 pandemic created the first nationwide lockdown. Hank Van Bilsen, consultant with the Invercargill Community Mental Health Team, says from day one, some people coped with the pandemic better than others. Now, in, in, in the beginning, I think people were worrying about, oh my God, uh, if one of my family or I get COVID, I might die. Van Bilsen specialises in cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT. That's a form of psychological treatment demonstrated to be effective for a range of problems, including depression and anxiety disorders. He says protesters who set up camp on Parliament's grounds this week feel like they're claiming a victim status. Vividly in front of Parliament in the last couple of days, who get angry uh, at um, because they feel that something is done to them and that is so unjustified. 
He recalls when seatbelts became mandatory in Holland when he was growing up, which he says many people saw as the government imposing on their freedom. And there were people saying, seatbelts are dangerous, they strangle you. And a lot of people you talk to, they had heard of someone who had an accident in the seatbelt and they were, their head had been chopped off. That's how dangerous they were. Information about COVID-19 has been flooding the nation's media since the early days. From the daily Jacinda and Ashley COVID updates to the mass media health campaigns. However, Van Bilsen doesn't believe the government is using fear as a tactic to gain societal compliance. Um, well, if they're doing it, they're doing a bloody lousy job. He acknowledges COVID has killed significant numbers of people around the world, but believes we should put it into perspective, with things like drunk driving and obesity still killing more people annually. In New Zealand, about 3,500 people die as a result of obesity. If you compare that to COVID, it's, it's, a, it's small. He doesn't blame the media, but says if people are feeling swamped by news about COVID, it can be good to give themselves a break from it all to help improve their mental health. In Dunedin, the South Today. The start of the first term was a special moment this year for about 100 children at East Rolleston near Christchurch. The pupils became the first ever pupils of a completely new school called Turahutu Fiu. Once fully completed, the new school will cater for 800 pupils from the surrounding Selwyn district. About 20 of the starting pupils will be based in the school's bilingual hub, where they will speak to Rio. Principal Kate Morgan said it's an, a unique opportunity for any teacher in their career to lead the opening of a new school. Oh, I feel very excited about it. It has been a lot of um, planning from early on, starting a couple of years ago. And today at the gates, I could just see the aroha of all of our whānau and all of our children. And so opening today is very, very special and a really unique uh, moment for our kūra. The school also has a modern hangarau technology facility, which will be used by year seven and eight pupils from around Rolleston, one of the district's fastest growing communities. A new hotel and mall style development is being proposed for Wanaka's town centre, transforming a large area of undeveloped land in Wanaka. A resource consent application has been lodged for a 143-room hotel in Wanaka's Ardmore Street. The development would also feature five retail spaces along the front and seven food and beverage outlets along the internal laneway. The plans cover more than half a hectare of land along Upper Ardmore Street, which currently houses a bungalow and a fish and chip cart. More than 50 residential apartments of various sizes are also included in the proposed development. Still to come on the South today. The Otago Secondary School sports season gets underway with the water polo tournament at Moana Pool, and we check out the new caps in the Otago vault side to play against Auckland in the Plunkett Shield match. Guess who? You recognise the eyes? Oh, OK, it's a haircut. Anyway, it's Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. Our three stores are carrying on as usual. Despite what's happening in the world, we have got some great stock for you. Personally, I've spent 50 years in this business, and we have some excellent supplier relationships. We've got great stock. It's hand-picked, it's here, it's on time, and it's ready for this great summer. Alex Campbell Menswear. So, as my favourite cup says, keep calm and carry on. Hi, we're a concerned Otago. 
Each Concern Otago hosts a multitude of social activities, including little bobs. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Spark your joy with jazz. The next generation from Honda. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. The big one. My Mate John's massive annual sale is on now. 20 to 80% off his entire range of rock bottom warehouse price furniture and beds. And My Mate John. Welcome back. The Otago Secondary School sports season is already underway, despite classes only starting back a week ago. Water Polo was one of the first codes off the starting block, with 20 different schools competing in a tournament at Dunedin's Minor Pool last night. Kicking off school sports was a splash. Classes may have only just come back for the year, but the first inter-school sports event of 2022 started last night at Dunedin's Moana Pool. Water polo players from 20 different secondary schools hit the water, having a ball as they battled it out in the local competition. So the Dunedin Water Polo Schools League is the first schools competition of the entire year out of all sports, so it's really exciting to have the kids down and rearing to go. This term will see teams from different schools face off against each other, with about a dozen games set to be played at Moana Pool every Thursday night. Otago Water Polo Club Development Manager Emma Collard says the competitive team sport is proving popular with young players. Water polo numbers are really good. We have a few schools that have around four teams, um, some you know just with the standard two, um, but school water polo is looking really good for Dunedin. Water polo as a school sport runs over term one and four with opportunities for the teenagers to play games at club level during the winter months. In Dunedin, the South today. The Otago Vaults named a couple of young guns in its side for a Plunkett Shield cricket match against Auckland, which started today. Thorn Parks gets an opportunity in the middle order, while there'll be a familiar surname at the top of the order. Getting ready for a double debut. Northeast Valley's Thorn Parks training yesterday with 18 year old University Grange opener Jacob Cumming, ahead of their call up to the Otago Vaults. Jacob has a good cricketing pedigree. He's the son of Otago and Black Cap star Craig Cumming. Obviously it's um, a pretty special occasion. Obviously it wasn't too long ago that I was here watching Dad play. So to get my own chance to go out and play for Otago, it's really special. Jacob enjoys his role as an opening batsman, replacing recalled Black Cap Hamish Rutherford at the top of the order. He's very keen to add to the family's Otago legacy Craig Cumming is Otago's all-time leading scorer in first-class cricket and has been one of Jacob's mentors. Dad's there if I need it. Um, he's there if I'm not quite feeling there technically or in other ways, but yeah, he's just been a really, he's a big help. He is, yeah. Nerves too for Thorn Parks, who hails from Gisborne, but is in his fourth year studying at Otago University. It's going to be a huge step up and 
yeah, excited, stoked about for the opportunity and um, yeah, just very thankful really. The Vaults coach impressed with both young men ahead of their first class debut. The two main things that you often look for in a player is the, the technique and temperament. And both players um, have sound techniques and, and very tight techniques and very compact game plans, which um, yeah, very much suggests that they'll be successful at, at first class level. The four day match between Otago Vaults and Auckland Aces is set to continue at University Oval this weekend. In Dunedin, the South Today. After the break on the South today, we catch up with new McLaren team Dunedin local Emma Gilmore as she prepares for this year's Extreme E Racing Series and we check out the weekend weather for you. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. <laughs> If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. The big one. My Mate John's massive annual sale is on now. 20 to 80% off his entire range of rock bottom warehouse price furniture and beds. You name it, John's got it in stock and ready to go. No waiting, plus you can pay it off interest free. Shop in store or online with click and collect or contact free delivery. The big one. Where did you get that furniture from? Stafford Street and my mate John. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. Super Rugby training in Queenstown's warm weather has made a few office workers hot under the collar. 
A tongue-in-cheek complaint has surfaced after some Highlanders players were seen training without shirts this week and as they headed back to their Crown Plaza hotel. That prompted a light-hearted email request for the Highlanders to keep their shirts on from office workers beside the appropriately named Steamer Wharf, which overlooks the training grounds. Staff claimed they had lost about 90 minutes worth of productivity with reports of draw on interior windowsills. The Highlanders have apologised for the shirtless parade and offered enough team flags to make some curtains. Dunedin rally driver Emma Gilmore has returned to the UK to prepare with her new McLaren team ahead of this year's Extreme E racing series. The first event is due to be held in Saudi Arabia in late February, giving Gilmore time to prepare. A home away from home. Dunedin rally ace Emma Gilmore has returned to her UK base ahead of the Extreme E racing series. As the first female driver signed to the legendary McLaren Motorsport team, she's looking forward to the season. Uh, I can't believe that it's already here, the first event with McLaren, so I'm very excited to be uh, heading to Saudi Arabia and to be getting the season started. Uh, our testing uh, pre-season went really well, uh, so yeah, I think uh, Tanner and I are really looking forward to, to finally getting things underway. Back in Aotearoa, Gilmore was one of the first drivers to sign up for this year's Rally NZ season. But she's well aware of the shifting situation as COVID-19 continues to spread around the world, with different governments having different rules and restrictions. Uh, it's a little bit tricky at the moment with the way the borders are uh, and I probably won't have time to be able to get back for some of the events in the New Zealand Rally Championship but I am hoping that I will be there at the Otago Rally because it's my favourite and, uh, and also Rally of New Zealand which is on later in the year. However, she's enjoying her pre-season testing at McLaren Racing HQ. The 2022 Extreme E season revs up on February 19th at Neom in Saudi Arabia. In Dunedin, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. New Zealand records a record 446 cases of COVID-19 with Dunedin's first community case in 22 months. A clinical psychologist encourages people to keep things in perspective with the return of COVID-19 to southern communities. And resource consent is lodged for a 143-room hotel in Wanaka. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Barry Stewart. Hello Melissa. What have well, you got for well, us? Well, the conversation, the talk of the day, of course, is COVID in, in the South. And the ODT understands that seven Super Rugby players have today tested positive uh, in Queenstown. So uh, COVID is obviously uh, a rapid, rapidly developing story and uh, you should check out uh, the paper tomorrow uh, for the latest details. And of course, keep up to date uh, on odt.co.nz. Uh, and of course, yeah, as mentioned, there's been a flood of COVID-19 locations of interest identified and that's ra ramped up uh, testing in the south. So we have all details about what has happened uh, uh, in Queenstown and Dunedin and further afield uh, today. So uh, watch this space. More to come. Gosh, it's certainly close to home now. Well, certainly it is. Uh, so, you know, we, we've got to take the, uh, the sensible options and of course we're all are largely double vaxxed and uh, boosted uh, as far as we can so uh, fingers crossed we uh, prepare ourselves and, and hopefully we escape the worst of it. Yeah. Um, bit of a uh, situation, the Targa Fishing Game uh, has called for an investigation uh, and it alleges that disturbing behind the scenes dealings of an ORC councillor. Um, so uh, more on that uh, in the paper tomorrow. Uh, in your weekend mix a magazine tomorrow, you can um, hear the or, or read about the reflections of uh, Dunedin writer Neville Peat, who spent uh, some time in Tonga uh, in the 70s, and he's reflecting on his time there. And of course, now, of course, they've had the tsunami and earthquake, so um, a nice reflections of, of uh, the kingdom uh, at the time. And escaping quarantine. Now it's not as um, it's not as uh, spectacular as it may sound, but um, 
the Hughes family have left the uh, quarantine island in, in, Dunedin, in the Dunedin Harbour uh, after spending a period there. So they've uh, vacated the island and moved on. So um, you only are allowed to stay there for a certain period. So uh, their time is up, so they're moving on and uh, hence escaping quarantine. So it's not quite uh, as exciting with the as official, it the official With the official blessing, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and also um, getting a taste of what was life was like in the 1500s. Uh, uh, a group of Dunedin uh, archaeologists uh, drilling, testing, scraping uh, for uh, what life was like then. And, and apparently they have come up with some interesting finds, so more about that. Hopefully some coffee or something, I wouldn't survive. Lovely, and you can catch all of that in tomorrow's ODT. And now it's time for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Starting with today's southern view taken of feathers on grass in the octagon. Looking at the situation, it'll be cloudy with showers along the coast this weekend, but mostly fine inland. However, temperatures will be cold right around the region as winds blow from the southerly quarter. Starting at the top of the island in the northwest, there's no relief for those in Westport as the rain continues with a high of 19 degrees. Greymouth also wet with showers and 21. Similar in the northeast with rain and 21 degrees for Nelson and 19 for Blenheim. And moving down the Canterbury coast, pack your brollies as the wet weather continues with rain for all in this area. Kaikoura reaches 18 degrees, Christchurch 17 and Ashburton 16. Looking at the southern towns, Catlins, Belclutha, Lumsden and Gore can all expect moderate southwesterlies with fresh showers and a high of 14 degrees. Moving westwards to the central lakes region, Wanaka, Queenstown and Alexandra can look forward to light southeasterly some cloud and temperatures between 16 and 18 degrees. It'll be colder in Tiana with moderate southwesterlies, a few showers and a high of just 14. Moving over to the eastern northern towns along the coast, Timaru and Oamaru, moderate southerlies, showers and 16 or 17 degrees. Dry inland at Twizel and Amarama with light south easterlies, some cloud and a high of 18 degrees. In Dunedin, there will be showers tonight with cooler south westerlies developing and an overnight low of 13 degrees. Overcast and cold tomorrow with light showers at times and dry periods. Variable winds at first, but south westerlies become fresh during the afternoon and evening. A high of 14 and a low of 11. And it's still overcast with light showers on Sunday with cold breezy southerlies, a high of 13 and a low of 10. And in Invercargill, it'll be cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 10 degrees. Cold tomorrow with mostly cloudy skies and the odd light shower possible with fresh gusty southwesterlies. A high of 14 and a low of 10 degrees. Sunday, expect a period of showers which will clear with the fresh cold southerly, so a good day for inside activities. A high of 13 and a low of 9. And that's the news this Friday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Nō reira, kia pai te pō, ka kite ono. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.